Welcome to Off the Cuff with Namrata, and I am uh, just too thrilled to have uh, Konkana Saint Sharma here with me on Off the Cuff. Thank you. Welcome, Konkana. Thank you. So I much can't for believe me. that you are sitting with me as such a huge fan of yours. Uh, you know, and uh, yeah, she's one of the most talented actresses of our times. I'll say she's two-time uh, national award winner, uh, and I think she's done over fifty films, five Filmfare awards, if I'm not wrong. And my absolute favorite. So, uh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and so kind. No, 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 no. You are wonderful. And you, your panel discussion was amazing yesterday. You've already told it so much about yourself. I so have, I had to I tweak. Have anything new to say. <laughs> so I tweaked my questions a little. Uh, you know, there was a discussion about uh, parents having influence uh, on uh, the creative the creativity of children. So I know what you know how your mom influenced your work mm -hmm. but what is one quality that you imbibe from your mom you know i've always found this such a difficult question because oh. i think that this is something i will be able to perhaps even answer the end, end mm -hmm. of my life if at all oh, because okay. her area of influence for me mm -hmm. is so vast and it's just so mm -hmm. i mean it's my entire personality mm -hmm. is kind of and it, partly an effect of her upbringing, you know what I mean? So it's very difficult to, for me, at least from the inside, to mm -hmm. separate and see. However, some things I would say that mm -hmm. uh, uh, what I have imbibed in, in that sense, yeah. I think, mm -hmm. is that, um, you know, she's a very hard worker. Okay. Uh, whatever she does, she's mm -hmm. a very hard worker. And having seen that, mm -hmm. uh, I think it's just that, so she actually having a, a uh, single working mother became yes. my template and because I'm in the same field yes. that was very useful for me I didn't realize at the time mm. because I'd already seen her do everything mm. and uh, it just for me it just became like yes this is possible and all of this is possible mm -hmm. so, uh, well, so it's like been it's very empowering empowering and she's been a great role model uh, yes. you know as a daughter so or, work yeah. ethic also work I think ethics. has really yeah. okay Okay. And what I read of you was that you were a, re a reluctant uh, actor um, and uh, you just did it for a lark and then you said, okay, I'll look for a job. So, uh, you know, we know and then uh, Mr. and Mrs. Ayer came along. But were you a reluctant director also? Yes. <laughs> oh, really? yeah, I didn't okay. want to do anything. <laughs> but it turned out so wonderful once again. Tell me yes, how. So I've just directed that. one and a half films. So you can't really see. No, but whatever we've seen of it, it's it's uh, it's authentic, it's original and it's uh, unique. I'd say. Thank yeah. you so much. Which is also why I don't want to keep directing because I feel like, you know, let, let's see how it works out. Mm -hmm. I have been a reluctant actor and director. I think, you know, it was because it's, I never had any burning ambition or any burning oh, passion. Okay. Okay. I was a sort of a, you know, a drifter mm. uh, slightly. Mm. Uh, and it just, a, I've always been a daydreamer all my life and okay. drifter, slacker kind of personality a little bit. Uh, I mean, of course, hard working. If yes. I've been given a task or if I've agreed yeah. to take on something, I will put in my best because okay. otherwise I feel. Mm. I don't know, I just don't function like that. So mm. I'll work hard, I'll be on time, I'll mm. try to, you know, collaborate and all of that. Mm. But I didn't have any, uh, you know, I have to accomplish this, I have to get this done, okay. I must, I didn't have mm. those checks at all. Uh, and either direction also happened because I was, um, I think I was taken with a certain idea. I wanted to share and mm. convey a certain feeling. Okay. I think that's where it originated. I mean, just to be yeah. Like, you know. And you did say that it went back to your childhood memory and a story that your dad would yes, tell. Okay. Yes, definitely done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was very well uh, done, I'll say. Uh, and uh, there was a panel discussion on anti-trafficking actually uh, in Sala uh, 2023. Okay. And I recently interviewed uh, Dr. Sunita Krishnan. She's the co-founder of Prajwala, okay. and she's a huge advocate of. Um, anti-trafficking uh, you know uh, she uh, uh, yeah anti-trafficking rights so you know you're a mother you're a mother of a preteen son and i did ask her a question how can we raise a son in today's environment um and she said stop uh, uh, you know doing this uh, blue for boys and pink for girls or guns for boys and barbies for girls and it it has to start from uh, the natal stages uh, what do you have to say uh, about parenting? Of course, thank you. What a lovely question. So I, uh, you know, this is something that um, 
I think about. Mm -hmm. And it's not like I always have the answers. But sometimes when one puts conscious thought to it, it mm -hmm. uh, will then express itself in actions also, mm -hmm. I find. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing I would say with my son is, for example, even when he was very young, uh, I mean, I don't know if I'm doing the right thing or what all there is to do, and I'm totally open to learning new things. But one thing I think mm -hmm. that, yeah, you know, to make him aware, mm -hmm. uh, for example, you know, uh, there was a time when he and I would sit on our balcony when he was still very young and mm -hmm. we'd have an evening snack or something and looking out onto a park or something yeah. where there mm -hmm. were children playing mm -hmm. and we would you know play I spy or something mm -hmm. and uh, I would bring it to his notice that mm -hmm. you see that there are only boys playing oh okay. and there are no girls playing oh there are no girls playing up to now why are there no girls you know why are yeah. the girls playing have yeah. you noticed that only boys are playing otherwise so what did he say called. Uh, I, know. I mean I don't think he said anything <laughs> okay. shattering at that point <laughs> I know my but friend. the thing is it was a conversation <laughs> mm. you know yeah, that about Safety mm. about vis invisibility about who occupies what spaces. Yeah. Another small example would be I remember again when he was quite young, mm. him wanting to put nail polish. Yes. And at that point, mm. uh, you know me saying, and I think that I would have said mm. this to a girl as mm. well, mm. saying, nothing to do with nail polish is mm. gendered or it's for girls or yes. it's for boys, but yes. rather that mm. I, you know, that you know you can wear nail polish, mm. but why don't you wait till you're older? Because okay. these are cosmetic and artificial things yeah. and mm. certainly you can wear nail polish once mm. you're older mm. and you can decide that for yourself. Mm. Mm. Those kinds of things. But, you know, as he became older and started going to school, he started telling me, <laughs> I know no long know. hair is for girls, <laughs> no pink is for girls. And, and then, then you're you just like, <laughs> what can I do? How could you even just counter it? So just yes. keep giving examples and you don't know where, how much is sinking in eventually. That's such a wonderful thing. I didn't think of it that way. You know, and I come from a generation very uh, traditional uh, kind of upbringing but I used to play cricket with boys mm. uh, you know I come from a small town Shimla okay. so uh, we would play outside yeah. and there was no television and stuff uh, it came later so uh, you know that's a great way to uh, broach that topic um, and now yeah I just saw a little bit of your conversation about uh, Choli Ke Piche the panel you did mm. and um, I've talked to Alankrita a long time back I think when uh, Lipstick Under My Burqa came in yes. and uh, you know people like you and her are changing the narrative consciously or unconsciously like you said you know I don't go about you know trying to mm. change but you still are changing it and now especially now with OTT coming up and you being in the director's seat do you think your responsibility doubles when you take a director's seat or you uh, you know then being an actor because you know I think directors have been game changers if you go back uh, in cinema uh, in uh, Hindi cinema or Hollywood like Guru Dutt and who else was there you know so many uh, I don't think that you know okay. I, I wouldn't like because different directors have different approaches and I certainly okay. wouldn't like to tell other directors what to do and I okay. don't think that uh, you know hmm. directors should come with some kind of social responsibility I don't think they should okay um, hmm. it's so I mean hmm. It may happen that, I you know, subject see. matter with a certain yeah. uh, social uh, mm. reality or social justice in mind mm. can sometimes mm. resonate more with me or with certain people that is there. Okay. But I do, wouldn't want to give that diktat to anybody okay. because what is social responsibility? People yes. see it differently. Somebody's Very responsibility may be that we are against a certain community. And we must hold up, our, you know, the certain kind of jingoism. Yes, for somebody may be these days. <laughs> yeah. So I cannot, you know, comment mm. on that. Okay. Um, but I do feel artists should be free, free to explore. Very true. Creativity can, uh, you know, uh, go away any which way, I'll say. Uh, so one of, this is a very easy question, I think you'll know. Uh, one of the most challenging characters that you played and one of the most easiest, which you just found easy and... Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> our character, I, you know, um, uh, what I find challenging is mm. often somebody who's very removed from me okay. economically, mm. socially, culturally. Mm. So, for example, I'm not like actually very good with accents, but I've mm. had to do like, for example, an American Indian accent in mm. Amu, mm. or I've had to do the UP dialect in Omkara, yeah. or I've had to do, you know, the Tamgram accent for um, Mr. and Mrs. Ayer. 
Yeah. So that requires a lot of oh. hard work for me. Okay. But for example, you know, a film like 15 Park Avenue, where I'm playing yes. somebody who has schizophrenia. Okay, or yeah. I, where I'm playing, uh, you know, the queer Dalit character in Gili Puchi. I love that. These are actually, thank you. Oh I found, in fact, mm. very liberating. Because in both, you mm. don't have to stick to very conventional notions of what is real and what is female. Very so true. very succinct, quick answer. I know, I know. And uh, I think that's, like you said, liberating. And uh, Gili Puchi especially, you, uh, you said you're generally in your day-to-day -day life very gender neutral. And it's not like, you know, you are, and that character, I think, required you to go, you know, find that kind of a... I think, you know, I had to embrace uh -huh. uh, the masculinity within me, which yeah. I have not uh, had the opportunity yeah. to do in other films. Mm. And honestly, even in real life, it's not like I, uh, one really gets a chance to do that very much, mm. to unleash your inner masculinity. One okay. really does Yeah, it. yeah, especially women. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. but uh, and I really enjoyed that because I think yeah. I definitely have that. I think most people do. You know, men yeah, yeah, do yeah, have yeah, yeah. feminine. These are very stereotypical notions. Yeah, and you know, now in academia we say gender is a spectrum. Gender is yes. fluid. It is performed. It yeah. is learned. And you know, I'm yeah. glad academics do all of this because slowly yeah. it trickles down to us, and you know, we make sense of the world. Absolutely, and we are sitting in the most affluent city talking about all this. You go to the rural places and I don't know, it might not apply there, yeah, you know. Well, I don't live here, but <laughs> <laughs> I live in the third world. So. Okay, no, but, uh, you know, in the end, I won't keep you for long. You've had a really long day. But I'll steal a question from uh, Deepak Ramola. I had uh, gone for his panel discussion. So one question that, uh, you know, I found in his book was, one thing of yours that you don't seek validation for. You know, I think that, uh, and this is something which came up yesterday also oh. in my uh, conversation, okay. because, um, you know, uh, when I was young, I was not a very good student. And it's only, I think, class 9, 10, 11, 12, I became a good student. But mm -hmm. in early years, I was not a good student. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was not famous. I became a little famous after college. Okay. And, you know, I saw how the same people treat you differently. And I think what happened, and, and you know, coming from the kind of family that I do, mm -hmm. and having a slightly unconventional kind of a, a background and being okay with being different, mm -hmm. I was never dependent on external validation. Okay. It was a very useful thing for me. You're lucky. I'm very lucky. <laughs> and, you know, not because I didn't grow up very conventionally pretty. I mean, I feel attractive enough. I mean, it comes and goes, you know, how it is. But I... So as a child, you know, what happens is if you're very good at studies or mm. very good at sports or very, you know, the, like a pleasing looking child, all uh -huh. of this can attract compliments which you can get yes. dependent upon. Yeah. I never had any of that actually. Mm. So that was, I think, very good for me. So, you know, oh, that is so wonderful. And it was amazing, amazing talking to you. Love, Love your answer. Talking, Love your work. Love and your I know, <laughs> oh, appreciate thank it. You. means a lot to me. I know I'm shivering from inside. But uh, thank you. Take care and be well. Thank you. Shosha is a creative Indian restaurant located in the heart of Silicon Valley. Shosha is a woman-owned business that serves traditional Indian flavors assimilated with molecular gastronomy techniques. The best Indian bar with happy hours in the Bay Area serves handcrafted drinks inspired by flavors from India with modern craft cocktails that are presented in unique ways. Shosha is a modern take on traditional Indian cuisine. We specialize in corporate luncheon, anniversary celebrations, birthday parties, and catering. Do check us out for a memorable modern Indian dining experience. Shosha is located at 141 South Murphy Avenue in Sunnyvale, California.